I talk to a lot of different people about wireless network security, and often I'll ask them an open-ended question, what does wireless network security protect? And usually about half of the folks that answer me will say, it protects the data going back and forth between laptops or remote clients and the network so that no one can sniff it, so an attacker can't actually crack open the data in transit. And about half of the respondents usually say, well, it protects from an attacker getting onto my network. It actually stops unauthorized people from connecting to my network. Very, very, very few people actually say both at the same time. It's usually only when I probe and ask a few different questions or have a discussion that they realize that wireless network security does both. It's designed to both prevent unauthorized individuals or systems from connecting to the network and to protect the information that's going back and forth between wireless clients and the network. So this concept of connection security only authorized clients and users can connect to the network, and data security, protecting the data in transmission or in flight, those both really go into making up wireless network security. You'll see that there are different techniques for both attacking and defending against both of those. There is no one silver bullet for wireless network security. It's about an infrastructure and a solution. And so administrators that just turn on WPA2 blindly, assuming that it'll protect, that's fantastic. They are going to get compromised. I can't stress that enough. And when I will ask the question of that same administrator, well, what is WPA2? Can you give me some examples or some detail or some specificity? Usually the shoulders come up, the shrug goes on. They kind of look like a puppy dog staring at an Encyclopedia Britannica set. They're just really confused because WPA2 is everything I need and there really isn't any more to it. Again, that's a really, really common mistake. If your network is in that same scenario, as an ethical hacker, we like that because there's probably some stuff that we can use to penetrate the wireless network. As an administrator or defender, probably not a great idea. Part of the reason wireless security is so important right now is that Wi-Fi is built into virtually every device that comes out. Any type of technology pretty much that comes out today has some Wi-Fi. Televisions have Wi-Fi. Radios have Wi-Fi. Cars have Wi-Fi. Virtually every electronic device in the house will have Wi-Fi. Anything that's designed to be mobile will be Wi-Fi. So it's really, really, really super common, and it increases the usability and flexibility of most of these types of devices. For example, throwing a game console into the kids' room, you don't have to worry about running cabled Ethernet or worry about getting a new DSL modem in the kids' room. You simply give it a Wi-Fi access point, point it to the right information, and boom, it's working. It's just on. Same thing with a phone. You bring a new phone home that's equipped with Wi-Fi. You simply tell it what your house network is and the password, and boom, it's on the Internet and connected and downloading updates and so forth. Well, that's great for usability. The concern there is that Wi-Fi signals can go really, really, really far. As an attacker, I can sit a quarter mile away, a half mile away, and with the right kind of devices, which are not terribly expensive, I can actually become part of that Wi-Fi network or sniff the traffic that's going on back and forth between the Wi-Fi clients and the access points. That is not necessarily a bad thing in a home because in a home you may only really be worried about uh, Xbox Live traffic or PlayStation Network traffic. But in the workplace, an attacker can simply point a directional antenna or get close enough physically to sniff all kinds of great traffic with not just a specialized device that costs tens of thousands of dollars, but virtually any wireless device, which can be extraordinarily cheap, run on any platform and pretty much run whatever software they want. So all of this functionality and this ubiquity of Wi-Fi is great for usability. It's great for functionality, but it's great for ethical hacking because it gives us lots of opportunities, lots of devices to listen to, lots of devices to exploit, lots of devices that can't handle maybe advanced security or deep crypto. Fantastic. Lots of vulnerabilities for us to, to exploit. Another reason most attackers are now focusing on wireless security is that in a lot of companies, Wi-Fi is 
preferred over wired Ethernet. Wired Ethernet or wired networking of any type is expensive. It's difficult to manage. It gets old. It has to be repaired. It breaks, that kind of thing. Where wireless, wow, the administrator might just deploy wireless for all clients throughout the enterprise because it's easier, it's quicker. When there's more bandwidth, bad administrators will just throw up another access point. They'll add stuff on uh, without thinking about it, without planning it carefully. And even if they have planned it carefully, plenty of signal for us to capture, for us to spoof, for us to attack from outside the company. And as well, part of your ethical attack or ethical hacking attack might be to commit a denial of service attack. Well, if all of the networking in an organization is wireless instead of wired, it's that much easier to jam all of that signal. You can buy a signal jammer fairly inexpensively uh, or just spoof a bunch of Wi-Fi traffic on the right channels and you've got an, a serious service interruption if there's no recourse, if there's no wire to fall back on at the company. So this focus on wireless security, really a lot of it is pretty great for attackers, pretty bad for administrators, gives them a lot of exposure.